Uh, this live stream is going to be a bit of a special live stream. We're going to do it a little bit different from other times because we have here the Wooting 2 Lacquer Edition EVT sample. Uh, in this live stream, we're going to do a broadcast, kind of a broadcast for half an hour or underneath half an hour, where we're going to talk 100% about the Wooting 2 Lacquer Edition, this EVT sample, um, the current status, and development. So I do have to mention, though, that uh, the quality of the camera here the camera quality is good but the problem is i can't control the camera on mac the drive the, i have no drivers on mac so the colors might change um focus might uh, screw up so that's kind of the the sucky part it's all in auto and i can't change it i would have changed it manually then you would have gotten gotten a better idea um, but eventually we'll have pictures and and videos on on the blog uh, where you can get a much better um, much much better idea what the keyboard really looks like and uh, how RGB is and etc. Here I have the Wooting 2 Lecker Edition. This is the EVT sample, uh, which is the engineering validation test sample. Is that correct, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, it's correct. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, what does it mean to have an uh, an EVT sample? What, what what is the engineering validation test really for? Uh, best uh, basically. For the engineering part, it's all uh, important to focus only on the PCBA. So in the, the whole phase of uh, before we go uh, mass production or, or even earlier to do the trial productions, everything on the electronic side needs to be secure, like have a final, at least a final prototype. So this is the, the stage we call uh, engineering valid, uh, verification test. Yeah, but most of it is only focusing on the engineering side. Yeah, but in in this case, we have uh, maybe a bit more than a regular EVT, uh, since we yes. already produced Wooting Twos before. So a lot of the parts um, were already available. So now we kind of we're, are we a bit closer to the DVT in that way? Uh, <laughs> the I would design say so. validation DVT, test. <laughs> yeah, design validation test. So uh, basically, in the, the test, it, it has three phase. One is uh, EVT, engineering, and DVT, design. And PVT is called production validation uh, test. Uh, so on, on the design phase, it's only focused on the design. And then on the PVT, it should, uh, normally we call the trial production, but uh, clearly there's a, a certain term it's called, it's just called PVT. So trial production is almost similar to uh, PVT. And, and PVT is production validation test, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So Kevin will go into that a little bit more later. Um, so to start off this whole update, I think it's cool to kind of show a bit about it, a bit of the RGB um, and do a small typing test. So you can also hear the keyboard. I received the keyboard uh, last Monday I did a small disc, uh, Discord stream that time and uh, with a few typing tests. And from my impression, I, my mind was blown how well it typed. It was better than what I expected. Um, and I'll tell you in a second why. So unfortunately with RGB, I can't show the full thing yet. We only have like a, oh, let me do this. The camera is not completely straight above it. So RGB wise, I'm not able to show a lot right now, which we tried to prepare a good RGB demo for the live stream, but there's still some small technical issues uh, that doesn't allow us to get full control of the RGB yet. So, uh, but this will be part of the blog update where we'll show a lot more of the RGB stuff so you have a better idea. So this is the only part I can show for the RGB. And then now I will just go into a small typing session so you can hear the keyboard. It's one of the first questions I also had, or at least first things that I also showed on, on Discord at that time. I'm going to throw this mic here. So uh, bad. Each of your hand comes into the screen, it's like, oh, it calls shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really bad. Uh, it's like, uh, I wish I could control the camera. Okay.
Oh, the stream just oh, stream died. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Pro stream. Pro stream. Oh my god. I think I'm just going to get random internet drops. It's uh. I'm just going to get random drops. I'll continue from here. It's back. It's back. It's back. Okay. Uh, I'll continue from the enter. I'll talk about the space bar in a sec. Okay. I think that your I think your camera just died as well. Oh no, there it is again. <laughs> no, it's back. It's back. So we it's fine, right? our audio is super heavy delayed. Oh, there's okay. Okay, this. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, just to continue because um, That's good. audio is going to be the most important thing from here on out, out now anyway. Um, so uh, the thing... This will just be a podcast. Yeah, it will be kind of like a podcast. Uh, oh. So... First thing first is that uh, you can hear that the sound is very suppressed on the keyboard. And that's because what well, we can confirm right now, we added also the foam inside the keyboard. So the final booting 2 Lecker Edition will have foam inside, which does help with the sound. And then there is this small question about the space bar, which I think we might just address in this update. Um, the space bar and the rattle, this happened after I took it apart and put it back in, uh, back together again. And I'm not completely sure why. I think a lot of the lube got out uh, during this process. Um, and the lube is uh, a very big factor when it comes to rattle, the space bar. So when I just received it, it was not there. Um, there is not a lot of rattle in general. It's just a little bit louder pitch than, um, than before. Uh, and then after... Uh, before I took it all apart. So, okay, so this is the um, EVT sample. It, it completely works. Uh, the firmware is installed on it, but the firmware is not at a state where you can, we can really show uh, visual things, but you can say that the fundamentals of the firmware are there. So we will be going in there later. Um, so now that we have, uh, before we had this EVT sample, the, one of the most important parts of developing the keyboard and getting to this EVT sample is and was the PCBA. And Jeroen actually received a PCBA in advance, a prototype PCBA in advance, um, before this EVT sample was ready. So Jeroen, what, uh, what happened when you received that first prototype PCBA? So before the stuff, <laughs> before, the, before the EVT, we already had like a uh, we call it the rapid prototype PCB make with the new manufacturer because um, with the EVT sample, we also had to wait for like the bottom case everything and we just wanted to verify just like the fundamentals of the PCB as soon as possible. So I think that one arrived about uh, two weeks ago or something like that. And that was just purely to, because we did some, um, uh, some changes to the PCB design before with the, with the Gateron switch, with moving everything to the bottom. And then we also had a lot of um, final pieces and verification, uh, 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 mostly uh, EMI compliant stuff uh, with the new manufacturer. And to test all of that, we have like this rapid prototype sample. So we received that about two weeks ago, and most of the stuff seems fine. Like all the basics uh, worked. There were just some issues with um, switching between all the different keys during scanning. That was a little bit too slow, in our opinion. So we just like uh, modified uh, some components here and there to kind of speed up the whole bunch. And uh, I think now where does some other? Yeah, there were two key keys that I accidentally linked to each other, which is uh, which was pretty funny. And uh, and the USB connector was uh, flipped. So um, yeah, that was pretty much it. There were it was pretty minor changes. So we uh, we got all those in the new PCB design now. And then. They manually changed uh, the other PCBAs for the EVT sample, right? 
Yeah, so because these chains are pretty small, because the keys that connect, you can just uh, cut, literally cut the, make a cut in the PCB in between. And then for changing component values, it's just a matter of resoldering some stuff. So, uh, and with the USB connector, you can just uh, reverse the wires and uh, then, it, then it works. So overall, I was pretty happy with the result. So, um, so then we, re uh, then quickly after the PCBA prototype, we received this EVT sample. Um, mm -hmm. Kevin just uh, introduced a little bit about what is uh, EVT, engineering validation test. Mm -hmm. um, so Kemp, Kevin, what really happens now that we have this uh, EVT sample? What what's actually next? I mean, I have a working, I have a nice keyboard here, missing some software parts. But does that mean that yeah. you know we can start producing it straight away? Uh, if you look into, uh, I would say no because uh, we still need to do the DVT test. Uh, design coming validation next. test. Yeah, design validation test. And design validation test is for only focusing on all the design aspect. And there is uh, gonna to have a, a drop test also include in the design validation test. Drop test meaning uh, you put a keyboard maybe uh, on a 90 centimeter high and you just drop it like six side. So you just test during this uh, kind of drop, drop down. Uh, is that going to have any damage? And next they have a new DVT samples and put it into the packaging and also to t uh, to give you a, t a drop down test. So this kind of uh, different testing is also included in this uh, design validation test. Yeah. And if all pass, it will go straight to the other stage, which is the production validation test. Yeah. So then um so then the design validation test finishes and then we can get into, we get, we get closer to mass production. Uh, I, I was, I would say over the uh, DVT uh, is very close to the uh, mass production, but before mass production, because we need to uh, at least run a trial. So uh, that is uh, what PVT does, uh, production validation test. Yep. Right. So uh, when I received the EVT sample, I actually also received the uh, final packaging of the lecker edition. Um, and Eric, are you satisfied with the result of the final packaging that I'm not allowed uh, to show on the stream, but we can't talk about oh, it all? <laughs> well, first of all, kind of sad face that we cannot show the uh, packaging on the stream because we wanted to keep it a uh, surprise like SAP, because we share a lot about the keyboard, right? So once you receive it, it should be nice that you can be excited for something or something fresh or new before you know all the gritty details. And uh, um, I think the packaging has been done for quite a while. You just received a final sample and um, it's, there are, I think, two mistakes in the packaging. And the worst part is there aren't really that big of mistakes because there are a few things that are flipped around. And I think people won't even notice that it is flipped around if we ship it to them. So um, in core essence, we will try to fix it if we have the time for it. But maybe this will delay the mass production quite a bit because packaging is being done by a different manufacturer. So if this will take up a lot of time and will interfere with the mass production, in that case, we just keep it as it is because those are just minor things and not really major critical parts for the packaging. It's just a print that is flipped upside down. Yeah. All right, then we also, I mean, I received the uh, PBT keycaps for this, with the set as well, but I think maybe, I don't know, like eight months back by now, we already finished actually the whole PBT dice up keycap stuff, right? Um, yeah, true. But in this sample, I have a US ANSI layout, but what does it mean for people that have ISO layouts? Um, well, First of all, like you mentioned, we have these, uh, the PVT keycaps are done for quite a while now and uh, we are satisfied with them. We, uh, uh, I mean, I have been using them on my own routing tool for quite a while just to quality check them. And so far I'm still uh, pleased with them, so to say. The quality is still up par, on par. And uh, what does it mean for the ISO version? Everybody who ordered the ISO, ISO version will have the international English version installed on their keyboard. 
and everybody with the ISO version will receive a extra set of keycaps, well, a few of them. Um, so they can change the ISO layout to their own language. So I think on the top of my head, we have uh, UK English, German, Nordic, Spanish. Am I missing one? Uh, English, German, Nordic, Spanish. I think I think those are the five, right? Yeah, yeah. I think those are it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you order the ISO version, you will get some extra keycaps to make it uh, into a specific language you desire. And uh, of course, about the PBT keycaps, everybody will also receive the uh, uh, the snack bar because that's something we promised uh, for the long wait. Is that right? oh, I can't ask that, but okay, that's awesome. I think um, I think it's really cool that people all receive the snack bar as well, right? I'm trying <laughs> saying this as an insider. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going to jump back to uh, to Jeroen uh, because the, Jeroen is playing a bigger and bigger role and has played a big role throughout the whole development, of course, because the PCBA is one of the central parts of this keyboard other than the, than the switch. Um, and now that we have um, the whole production insight, what type of changes are still required for the PCBA? Are there still changes required? Yeah, very, very minor. So I think they, um, during testing, they found out some sort of slight misalignment issue. Um, so we're gonna like uh, probably make some holes that, that kind of like uh, click into the bot case, bottom case a little bit smaller or change the shape a little bit. I think they haven't really figured out what the what the best way is there because it also kind of dependent on their manufacturing method. But uh, mm -hmm. there's this, there's this two holes that they want to change a little bit, and they had like one last uh, tip which I thought was pretty smart, which is uh, we have some screw holes. And in my design before, I just put some some traces or some wires right next to it. And then the engineer of the factory said, "Hey, if you uh, if you screw in the screw and you do it very tight, it might damage whatever is around it and uh, short circuit or something like that." So we kind of like uh, retrace those wires as well. Uh, is there anything else? It sounds oh, like some it. minor improvements compared to the original design, but nothing groundbreaking, right? Yeah, it's really like those, uh, let's say, uh, polishing touches, final touches to uh, to make it perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, but but I think this, <laughs> yeah, all these things, they're very important. But then the next big step, I don't know if you're going to talk about that, but then there is, uh, there is this uh, uh, phase we're going into now with uh, FCC uh, testing as well where they're going to do uh, EMI tests. So meaning uh, test if the, if the keyboard doesn't emit too much uh, crap basically when it's on. So it won't disturb your other devices. Right. Uh, all the certification, right? For yeah, basically <laughs> certification. CE, That's FCC. Right yeah, CE, FCC. Yeah. All right. So earlier you mentioned about having to change the holes in the PCB to better fit or align the PCB in the bottom case. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, brings me to the Wooting 2 mold. So Kevin, uh, what, what's actually up with the Wooting 2 mold right now? So uh, OK, uh, the mold status is uh, we, fi we finish with our old uh, the mold factory. And now within uh, today, Scott confirmed our new manufacturer uh, the range of uh, moving the mold into layer factory by next week. Yeah. And then um, you mentioned that you mentioned also something about, I oh know it's not actually part of it, but is there anything else that needs to be done with the mold uh, after it's moved to the new manufacturer? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, it will. It will, but it will still be like a very minor uh, modifications uh, because uh, there's uh, some screw holes. The screw needs to be changed into a certain spec fit fitting to the new manufacturer we cooperate with. But this uh, will not. Uh, this is not like a modified mold to uh, the previous we have. Yeah, it's total different. Yeah, right. but still there's a minor change here and there. 
Yeah, but but it's mainly focusing on how to make the assembly go smooth. So then, in other words, the changes required, the small changes required to the mold, are just focused on a uh, smoother production, and not necessarily yes. uh, a problem with the product. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that does sound we're pretty close to uh, mass producing the keyboard. Um, and obviously, as what we see here, right, with the EVT sample, uh, it's not functioning right now. And firmware is a big part of the keyboard also. Um, so, Yulun, before we go into mass production, what are the requirements for the firmware, the software on the keyboard? So for the, so for the mass production firmware, we're very focused on, let's say, uh, making sure the core is correct. So. We, when it comes to the utility side, for example, we can just, let's say when the keyboards are on the boat, we can still do the utility side without any issues because the customer, when, or when you guys get the keyboard, uh, you can just download the utility and you'll get the latest version. But then for your keyboard firmware, that's not really the case because of course you could update, but there are always some, let's say things that are tough to change. And in our case, there's a very big part in the firmware, which is the new flash memory chip we have added so that you can basically store unlimited profiles on the keyboard. So what we're very focused on right now is making sure this, let's say, core part of the firmware is correct. And what that includes is this RGB, the flash memory uh, setup, which is a, a whole big topic. I don't know if we want to go into that now. Um, but and then there's, uh, we can what? talk about the uh, memory uh, in, during open session, I guess. OK, sure. Yeah, because it's quite a big topic. So basically. The flash memory, RGB. Uh, but you can talk about the, the wait. You can talk about the new concept for memory, but maybe not too much about the impact for it on Larta keyboards, for example. Just on the essence. Doesn't make it much clearer, so I'll just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's just say the implementation of the flash memory. So, so basically. Okay, how are we going to? So we have this flash memory chip, which is basically okay. There's just a whole bunch of bytes you can write, but then you need to create some sort of order in them, right? Like just if you have a hard drive and your Windows will have some sort of system to arrange everything. That that is something similar we have implemented as well. Uh, and then another big part in the factory is uh, something we want to do for analog calibration, which is what we want to measure some values for every keyboard to make sure that when you get the keyboard at home, that they will all be already be calibrated to, let's say, this this um, sensor and switch combination that you have on your keyboard. So those are some uh, some vital things that are that are that are supposed to, or that need to be done before the keyboard leaves the factory. Basically, that's what we're focused on right now, and that's also why when with the EVT sample we have right now, like you can't really do much with it yet, but that, but there's already so many things that are working at its core. It's just that we can't really use them yet, if that makes sense. But they are ready for production. So in other words, you build actually a lot of fundament, fundamental parts of the firmware, but it's just all not really yeah. interactive at this moment. Um, yeah, unless, I, I, yeah, I think that's, yeah. All right, so. I think that that's how you can say it. So I'm obviously very excited to start using uh, my EVT sample to play play games and you know type with it in general. Yeah. I was hoping to type the whole update with it, uh, yeah, yeah. but maybe now it's going to be part of the update. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so it makes the typing me... thing is pretty. Uh, the typing thing is a little interesting because uh, I actually surprised Simon with this uh, earlier this week because he th he also thought, oh, if I just have this uh, new PCB, I can just start typing. And I was like, oh, surprise! Our Keys are actually all connected a little bit differently than the Wooting too. so we kind of have to okay, create that's this, why. Uh, new mapping and the setup again. So that's why we can't just. So even though the the basic setup of the keys is the same as the Wooting too, but then because we changed the PCB layout and everything, we we kind of like uh, switch up the numbers a little bit. Let's say so that's uh, something we'll still need to adjust for. All right, so that uh, it, well, it makes me feel feel very excited, and uh, it makes me also feel excited for everybody else. Uh, to get started to uh, play uh, with the Lecker edition. Now, usually we go to the factory to do these production vlogs, but now that we have COVID still being a thing uh, this year, uh, there's a good chance. Um, I mean, are we still going to the factory, Eric? 
No, no, we uh, we definitely won't go to the factory. It's uh, um, with the whole COVID nineteen situation around the world. It's not uh, really worth the risk to go to another country. Plus, you have like it, it will take a lot of time if you want to go to China, right? So first you need to go uh, two weeks into quarantine once you arrive in China. And also when you leave China again, you also have to do another 14 days quarantine. Uh, quarantine. And that, uh, yeah, that just sucks balls, you know. <laughs> Nobody wants yeah. to stay uh, a month in a hotel just to check on a mass production. A mass production. Um, and even though it pains us in our heart, because normally during the first mass production of all the keyboards, we like to go to the factory and make vlogs and talk about and all the struggles we have there and the little victories we have there during the mass production uh, but this with the lecture edition we just won't be able to go to the factory um, but does it mean that the quality will suck off the keyboard or nobody will keep an eye on the quality or the whole production process no there's this company called the uh, v-trust uh, we've been already working with them a few times for productions with the wrist dress and uh, uh, other productions um, and what they will do they will go to the factory and order it for us doing a mass production so whatever we tell them to do or check or whatever they will do it for us so that's very uh, very cool and uh, afterwards they will give a very detailed report what's going on and based on that report we uh, uh, yeah we can guarantee the quality so to speak so you, you could say it's like a surrogate from us going to the factory. <laughs> and how, yeah. how, how are we going to deal with that content wise if uh, people want to see something from the production? Yeah, sure. So, so we understand everybody who uh, ordered this keyboard back to back the whole project. Uh, they want to see something, right? Um, just to be part of the whole final steps there. Um, we have an idea uh how we can sort of produce content uh i'm not gonna spoil exactly what it is but uh let's say the v trust company they will make some pictures and uh, videos for us and we can use that and we will have a cool way to update you guys uh, yeah for sure all right so uh but uh, COVID 19 doesn't have any impact on the schedule for uh when it comes to the production right now, or is there still something that can impact this, the production because of COVID? Um, uh, uh, that's impossible to answer, right? I mean, uh, if everything continues as it is now, then there won't be that major problems because everything in China is sort of uh, working as it used to be before COVID-19. Uh, and exporting products from China also is similar. Than before at the moment especially if you do it by boat but you never know what's going to happen right yeah uh, uh, a second wave worldwide can come and maybe whole china needs to go into lockdown again you know and sure that would delay the project again but that would be terrible um, <laughs> yeah and i mean so, probably there will be some delays with shipping i guess uh yeah there will probably be delays with shipping that's also i think we already noticed uh early this year with the whole COVID-19 thing. And we can assume it will happen with the lecture edition as well. Okay, so this brings us to the last part of the update, um, where I'm just gonna share a little bit about the schedule. So the schedule that we have online right now uh, says that we're going to deliver the keyboard in November. But if you follow the update, um, November is gonna be a very difficult a month to deliver the keyboard itself and we're just trying to do our best to deliver the keyboard in December and to give some context to that is what um, makes the delivery in November also very difficult is that we need to do C freight so as Eric told before the impact of COVID on on logistics in general is that it's way too expensive to, to do air freight um, mm -hmm. so we are forced to do C freight and in the past we've always very often in the past, no, every time in the past, with these type of projects, especially when there's a delay, we've always used air freight to save time uh, and deliver as soon as we can. But now that is just not an option. So um, when it comes to the exact schedule, all we try to do is deliver bef uh, within December. That's the best we, we're going to do, that we're going to do our best to do that. Um, but we just can't guarantee anything until there's a date for mass production because from that date 
I can plan the C freight, I can estimate the C freight time, and we can estimate how long it's going to take to ship to you. Before that date, it's all about getting to that mass production where we're still working very hard on and we're trying to do everything as fast as we can without skipping on uh, uh, important parts uh, when it comes to quality, when it comes to uh, making sure that we, we deliver on what we promise in general um, and not compromising too much to ensure speedy delivery. As for example, with the packaging, what Eric mentioned before, you know, text that is rotated the wrong way around is not the end of the world. We can skip on that issue if it uh, causes any delay. Um, but something like what Eric, uh, what Jeroen mentioned of um, uh, 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 rerouting, rerouting the lines uh, uh, a bit f away from the screw holes, that is a quality improvement that is going to happen. Um, so these are the kind of decisions that we'll be making from here just to make sure that we can get to a production as soon as possible and still deliver in December. And that marks the whole update. I want to... I want to just end this segment by thanking uh, Kevin, Irun, and Eric for uh, sharing all this information. And thank you for the chat, for listening through everything. Uh, then, uh, but it's freaking amazing, right? Oh, we're so close. Uh, so now, yeah, we're so yeah, yeah. So now we can uh, relax. We can clap, I guess. <laughs> the script is over, guys. <laughs> Yeah, we did it. That was half an hour. <laughs>